Good morning, YouTube. Today, I'm gonna review the Ferrari 488 GTB. So are you recording all of the nefarious activities? If you're new to the channel, my name is Dan, and this is my garage, and this channel is all about the supercar ownership experience, buying, selling, maintaining, and DIY work on them, and also, I can help you with your supercar needs, so I have consultation services, I sell parts, so go check out my website, normalguyssupercar.com, and there you can find all sorts of interesting things that might be able to help you out. So today, we're going to do a review of this 48 GTB, and it was lent to me by my friend Seth, and he's actually opening a brand new shop. He's going to be selling Chemical Guys products. The shop is called Detail Garage Round Rock, so Detail garageroundrock.com. The grand opening is going to be on Saturday, November 14th. I'm going to be there. It's going to be a lot of cool stuff. This car is absolutely beautiful and we're going to talk all about it and show you the differences between the 48 and the 458. So again, real quick, all of you in the Austin area, if you want to go visit Detail Garage in Round Rock, it's located at 1208 on North I-35 in Round Rock. You can also buy products on their website, detailgaragerounrock.com. So they are going to be Austin's only carrier of Chemical Guys products. If you're a Chemical Guys fan, which I am, I have tons of Chemical Guy products. You can go pick them up there in their shop, or of course you can still order them online. Okay, yes, I've been waiting to do this review for a very, very long time because, well, it's kind of one of those dogmatic debates. So within the Ferrari community, there is a lot of people who absolutely hate the 488, and there's a lot of people who absolutely love it. And it all comes down to the turbos. This brings up some interesting things, which is, first of all, the naming convention for the 488 is totally different than anything in the previous line of the mid-engine V8. So the 458 is a four and a half liter, 4.5 liter V8. The 488 is actually 488 cubic centimeters in displacement for one cylinder. Kind of taking a departure from what they've been naming all the other cars. And of course, the other big thing with those turbos, you've kind of lost some of that Ferrari sound that people love so much. People that want the sound and don't want the turbos are 458 fans and people who don't really care about that and we want higher performance. Well, let's be real. If you want a modern supercar to have supercar performance numbers, you almost have to have turbos nowadays because everything has just gone crazy with horsepower. Since we're already talking about the engine, let's start back there. We've got the 3.9 liter V8 twin turbo Ferrari engines. It is a different engine than the 458. It is no longer the F136 block. It is the F154, which basically is the same engine that they put in the California T. thing about this engine that's so fascinating is it is actually quite a monster. So this thing puts out 660 horsepower, 560 foot-pounds of torque. So that is 100 more horsepower than the 458 and 160 more foot-pounds of torque. So that is why we can get way more impressive performance numbers. This thing will scoot zero to 60 in three seconds flat and run the quarter mile in a 10.4. Do a little bit of tweaking to this thing, maybe tune the turbos a little bit, tune the ECU. You can easily have a well over 700 horsepower car and probably get yourself into the nines with a 
effectively totally stock engine and turbo setup just doing a computer tune. So these cars are absolutely performance monsters, just ridiculous performance. So stylistically, the big thing that distinguishes the 48 from the 458, it's these big side scoops. With the turbos, we have a little bit less room to work with inside the engine bay. So we had bigger intakes on the sides. A lot more air needs to be pushed through this car because we have intercoolers. It's a little bit more complicated car and surprisingly, it weighs basically the same as the 458. I don't know exactly how they did that. I think maybe it's because the engine might be slightly less heavy because it's a lot smaller displacement engine. And realistically, turbos don't weigh a whole lot. The intercoolers aren't really heavy either. Another substantial change is the way that they modified the front of the car because effectively this is the same chassis. I mean, they might have some minor differences, but they are lengthwise, heightwise, basically everything's almost the same. I mean, even the side view mirrors you can see are basically the same, but they just changed the look of it to be slightly different. We obviously have some updates on the styling. People either love or hate these kind of reverse scoops right here. I actually personally, Think that the 488 looks a little better than the 458 and i know i'm gonna get crap for that but i don't care i actually do think it looks slightly better for i did actually change the brakes out on these to be a little bit more effective so the stopping distance on this car is shorter than the 458 even though it weighs basically the same so one very cool and functional stylistic feature on the 488 is actually this vent well I don't know if you call it a spoiler or a vent or whatever, but that actually goes through down here. So it redirects air underneath and channels it so it comes out like that. I think that's actually really cool. Also, they have the kind of F1 style fog light down there. That is really cool. Totally looks like an F1 car. So the seats aren't a whole lot different. They look pretty similar, but as soon as you start looking at the dashboard, the center console, and most importantly, the radio controls, you'll notice some significant differences. The big changes, okay, so we have pretty close to the same air conditioner controls. The center console, eh, it looks a little bit different. We actually have like the exact same buttons right here, but this little layout right here is a little bit improved. We got this like nice little tunnel. We got, you know, you can stick your hand under it and we still have the tiny pathetic little cup holders that are effectively worthless. The stereo gets a little bit better. They have basically the same controls, but it doesn't have like the two different options on the buttons. The layout's slightly different. The radio itself is just a little bit more improved. They also changed the menu for the screen on the left side so it's got different buttons different functionality you even have the pit speed thing and they also relocated the axle lift button on the left side so it's a lot easier to find frankly having it down here in the center in the fourth of eight makes it kind of a chore to find and i always accidentally hit the stupid button for the glove box oh and speaking of the glove box we yeah we finally have a logical way to open up the glove box with an actual handle on the glove box you'll notice they also relocated the window controls onto the door panel instead of up here. And then they also relocated the trunk release and the gas door release onto the door instead of down here by your foot. Engine bay release is in the same location and the kick panels and everything else kind of look very similar. Basically, you've got some minor improvements and then a couple of significant improvements. Stylistically, it's slightly different. The big change here is the performance. It is a substantial performance increase. So the only way we can show that is, well, we need to go out and drive this thing. So so let's go do that. So before we fire this thing up, I wanna note a few things. Number one, this actually has been modified just the tiniest bit. It has the valves pulled on the exhaust. So it is a lot more baritone and bassy on startup and it sounds a little bit better, frankly, in my opinion. Now I do have a friend who has one of these and we put in aftermarket exhaust with an X pipe and we got rid of the cats. And let me tell you, it actually sounds pretty amazing. So those of you that have hang up on the sound and that's the only reason you don't want one of these cars, well, you can actually make them sound much more akin to the 458 with that high-pitched screaming sound. You have to get rid of the cats and you have to put in an X-pipe. Once you do that, these do actually sound like proper Ferraris. Anyway, let's start this up and we'll go take it out for a spin. <laughs> in the 48 you're gonna notice a few things if you've been in a 458 it does feel just a little bit more refined on the interior the dinging sound is uh just as annoying but it's a different tone i really wish it would shut up i hate that Ferrari it feels like they have to constantly remind you you're in reverse all right there it went away and another thing you're gonna notice before you even get in the car is we finally have a modern key with no key you know it's just the fob so 
yeah, welcome to the 20th century, Ferrari. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> you can kind of feel immediately the clutch management is just a little bit better. 458 is very smooth, but this one's even a little bit smoother. And at slow speeds, the shifts are very smooth. Really smooth. And the downshifts are also smoother and quicker. The seats are comfortable, the seating position's basically the same, the steering wheel feels basically the same. The view out the back looks about the same, the view out the sides look a little bit different because you got those air scoops and so if you kind of lean over you can see them in your side view mirrors. But other than that, so far all of this about, is about the same. Oh, that's interesting, it has a, the parking sensors come on when you come to a slow speed automatically so you don't uh, get too close to the car in front of you. Okay, unfortunately we got stuck behind a bunch of cars. We can't really play too much right here, but we'll give it a little go. So, uh, that was a like a 20 to 60 run. The traction control light kicked on when the turbo spun up. Definitely could feel the turbo lag, but that was starting in second gear at about 20 miles an hour, so you're gonna expect some turbo lag at that sort of speed. Ooh, you can feel that torque. Way more torque. It is definitely a much, much more torquey engine. We still have the same basic transmissions, the same get track seven speed. So we get slightly better miles per gallon, if you care about that. Still have to fill up with premium and all that stuff. If you've never driven a turbo car that's got a lot of horsepower, it's very weird because it's like this pressure pushing against you. It's not like the punch you get out of a naturally aspirated engine. It's like this, it kind of comes on smooth and slower, but it's just a lot more force once it finally hits. The traction control, traction control. Yeah, we're gonna have a much harder time keeping grip on this thing. I'm definitely not turning off traction control. section where you see how the handling is and how it handles these bumps already it's a tighter feeling but very smooth okay we gotta go slower that one and that one but yeah this is really rough section of road bouncing around and the car feels completely planted you don't hear a sound it's totally totally like everything's fit and finish is perfect in this car the handling the steering wheel feels nice and tight the grip feels good the bounciness doesn't get to you again we're in sport so let's turn to race and it's probably gonna get a lot bumpier and already you can feel those bumps all right here we go now it's time for my favorite road here we go all right let's give it some go the difference that a hundred more horsepower and a hundred and sixty foot-pounds of torque makes whoa so I'm in third gear and when you give it the go pedal it goes and it spins up those turbos fast like quarter of a second and you're feeling it Wow see Woo! yeah in fact the turbos are almost as fast as you can roll onto the gas pedal Wow, that is impressive. So I would anticipate that it should have very similarly, similar handling. The steering wheel should, should feel just about as good. Oh man, you really gonna go that slow, dude? Oh, we may have to uh, do this run again. This guy is going way below the speed limit. Well, while we're in uh, Solania, behind the world's slowest driver, talk about how comfortable it is yeah I am extremely comfortable the handling is 
basically feeling the same as the 458. Maybe a little bit tighter just because it's more modern. They probably have better geometry. They have, you know, my, mine's 10 years old, so the bushings are probably starting to wear a bit and things like that. But the braking feels pretty close to the same. Everything feels really similar. It's just a huge difference in the way that the engine comes on. And that's really what you should expect. You should expect that to be the case. This should be basically a 458 twin turbo. And that's effectively what you got. So 100 more horsepower, 160 more foot-pounds of torque means we go way faster. We got big brakes so we can stop just as fast as necessary. Oh, thank God this guy's turning. My salvation. Oh, wow, he is the slowest motherfucker. <laughs> spin up you can hear the blow off valve <laughs> and the shifts are I mean you you drive the 4 of 8 and you think there's no way that the shifts can get any faster and yet here they are they're faster it's incredible <laughs> yeah handling is outstanding tons of grip very precise exactly what you'd expect out of Ferrari whoa dude you're in my lane what the hell was that I could drive this car very fast on a track and feel very confident, which might be a problem. I might be able to get away from myself because it's giving you a bit of confidence and frankly, then you're gonna turn off traction control and you're gonna be in those trees over there pretty easily. Wow, just huge grip. Oh man. I know, I know you don't have that Ferrari scream, the 9,000 RPM scream. But you do actually still get to 8,000. Uh, good dip. So we're still getting up to 8,000 RPMs in this thing. And like I said, you yank out those cats, you put in an X pipe, and it does actually sound like a proper Ferrari. And you get kind of some like cool turbo whistle. I actually think the turbo whistle sounds pretty cool when you have it really prominent. You can sit there and hear it, like even at idle and stuff, that was whistling. So that is pretty neat. Let's go here and let's do a launch control. All right. And... <laughs> okay. The launch control is way, way better than the 4x8's launch control. <laughs> Holy crap. Uh, I lost my stomach on that one. That was impressive. Uh, wow. We were uh, scooting really, really quick on that one. Holy crap. I'm a fan of that. I might have to go do that again. Pretend like we uh, are being civilized. We've got a hot date. It's a Friday night. Look at this. Kind of on a bouncy road. I put it into sport mode. Just driving around pleasantly. Seventh gear. Can barely hear the road. You can probably hear the microphone squeaking more than you can hear anything else in this. Wow. I mean, yeah, you're 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 gonna be able to take people comfortably on a drive. So you know, I go pick up. Uh, Meg and take her out to dinner and she's gonna be pleasant and happy and of course she's gonna have to sit in her super low car eh, you know gotta make some sacrifices so yeah as soon as we're in seventh gear we're only going the speed limit and they give it some gas and it's dead nothing I mean you wouldn't expect it to be really it's just until those turbos come alive you've got no power it's pretty gutless without the turbos but the lag is not bad when you're in a proper gear. So again, let's put it back into, well, let's leave it in sport. Wow, I can shift up and down super fast. I just click, 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 click. It's right there. So, you know, more proper gear, much more get, much more push. Turbos come alive much faster. 
again, hitting some bumps. Don't really feel them that much. Can't really hear them that much. Yeah, everything about this is just a much more refined version of the 458 with a little bit more muted tone, but a whole, whole lot more power. Like, significantly more power. And the transmission is just much, much quicker, much sharper. Very impressive on the transmission. It is outstanding. And time to give it the go pedal. start getting cheaper people are going to start doing more modifications to them and speaking of cheaper so here's where the interesting thing is these things now you can occasionally find them under two hundred thousand dollars so they're kind of at a weird depreciation point in this in the curve the base price of these cars were generally over three hundred thousand dollars they were a pretty big step up in price from the base 458 so the depreciation of these is already kind of coming into play you can pick them up in the 200 to 250 range for really clean, very low mileage examples. This car, believe it or not, he found this car on the showroom. So it actually was sitting there ready to be sold. I don't know if someone ordered it and then canceled their order after it was built or I don't know what, but they gave him a really, really good deal on it, which is unusual for Ferrari. They generally don't sell these things below MSRP, but it had a hundred miles on it. It was still a brand new car. I don't know. It's a weird situation. It's, it's one of the first times I've ever heard of someone being able to buy a model like a 48 just right there in the showroom. Typically, you could only do that with something like a Portofino or a California. Those, they might have a showroom floor or a used car. Always, you know, they have lots of used cars available. So one thing that they did change a decent amount is the gauges in this car. They actually made the gauges improved quite a bit so you have better functionality. It's a little bit more intuitive. You know, it gives you like uh, little dots at the bottom so you know how many gauges are available. So like this screen has four gauges. Um, but you know, it's ergonomically, it's pretty darn close, except for again, the radio has a little bit better buttons, a little bit better controls. So on the controls and the steering wheel, it's effectively the same thing as the 458. You still have the turn signals on the steering wheel itself. You've got radio controls behind the steering wheel. Flappy paddles that stay stationary. They're attached to the column, not to the steering wheel itself. Start button, axle lift, but or so start button, you've got this the bumpy road mode button. Oh, here we go. That guy thought he was gonna pass me. No, he was not. I will say those downshifts do sound really pleasant. It's got a good sound to it, it's just not the same sound. It's a different sound. It's much more deep and baritone. You don't have that scream. I know that that's that's the problem though. People associate that fry high pitched scream. All right, gonna fill them up with some Shelfie Power Nitro Plus. 
So here's the weird thing about the 488. It's kind of a, a love it or hate it car. And really there's only like a few complaints and they're all basically because of the turbos. So it's the sound and the turbo lag. Other than that, there's not a whole lot to complain about. I mean, maybe a little bit, some people complain about the sides, but it's generally a good looking car. Performs amazing. Just a reminder, go to Detail Garage Round Rock if you need any sort of chemical guy stuff because that's Seth's new business. So congratulations, Seth. Again, it's grand opening is on November 14th. It's a Saturday. I'm going to be there and I'm going to buy some stuff. So you guys should come join me if you're in the Austin area. We're going to have some cool cars there. It should be fun. Thank you so much for watching. We have tons of car stuff coming your way. So you're going to want to stay tuned. It's going to be sweet.